<laughs> okay, so today we're going to talk about presentation. Um, I'll give you some feedback and some tips. And then Steffi today is going to do her presentation. Now, Eva first. Oh, Eva first. Okay. <laughs> I think, how long is your presentation going to be? I think 10 minutes. Okay. Is it okay? Of course. Um, okay. so I think maybe we'll have class for 30 minutes and then oh, okay. we'll take a break and then you can come back to do the presentation. And I think I want to spend more time discussing or asking you questions and we can talk about it. Okay. Okay, great. So Eva, can you read the first paragraph and then Steffi read the second paragraph? Okay, uh, all giving an oral presentation is extremely nerve-wracking, but the task becomes even more daunting if you are doing a presentation in English as a non-native speaker. After all, well, you may be able to communicate in everyday situation. Public speaking is a different pros, prospect, 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 entirely. Never, nevertheless, learning to give excellent presentation in English can be extremely benefi beneficial, especially when you consider that English is the international language of business and practice makes perfect. Okay, great. So here, here are some words that I think maybe you're not very familiar with. So first one is nerve wracking, nerve wracking. What do you think nerve wracking means? Nervous. Right, good. Okay, so it may cause you a lot of stress and anxiety. So you're like, oh, like when you hear about, oh my God, to do an English presentation, right? It's very <laughs> nerve wracking. So here, daunting. What does it mean by daunting? What do you think in this context? It says, but the task becomes even more daunting if you're doing the presentation in English. Even more balanced, uh, um, hard or hard. Okay. okay, it could be hard, difficult. Okay, very good. So, a lot of times when sometimes you're reading something or you see something that maybe there's one word in in this whole sentence that you don't know, try to think about different words that you can put into it, right? So even more difficult if you are doing the presentation in English, right? Oh, that makes sense, right? It's more difficult because uh, my English isn't as good as Chinese, right? So these are some of the tips that if you see something that you don't know, we say that, oh, let's try to understand the whole context. But you can sometimes guess if there's only one word you don't know. Right. Mm, yes. Hey, okay, great. Daunting. Okay, that's the word. Another one. Different prospect. 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 Okay. Okay. So here we're talking about public speaking. It means talking to maybe one, two, three more people in the room. It could be even twenty, right? If it's a big room. Okay, so here we have something that you see here is extremely beneficial, extremely beneficial. What does beneficial mean? Do you see any words in here that you might know? Good for us. <laughs> okay, it's a benefit, good. Okay, so maybe good for you, right. So. It's saying here that learning about giving a really good presentation in English could be really good for you, right? Because English is an international language and maybe this can help you during your work, right? If you're working for an international company or your clients are from different countries, 
Okay. And also it says practice makes perfect, but I think pro practice makes progress, right? It doesn't really have to be perfect, but you're going to get better at it. Okay, so that's why I think it's really important to practice having these computational skills in my class. And I think it's nice to share about different things that you like. If you love to travel, share about a country you have been to, right? If you love um, pets and animals, share about your dog. Okay, so I think different topics, it's all okay. It's just how you are comfortable with what you are saying and how you say it and tell your story. Okay, great. So do you have to do presentations at work? Um, it, this question, I guess it can be Chinese or English. Um, Steffi, can you answer this question first? Uh, yes. Uh, 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 we, we just practiced presentation before and it's uh, in the start is really difficult, but uh, as you say, practice makes progress. So now it's not so nervous like last time, that like the first time. Okay. Yeah, it's something you get used to. So the more you do it, the more you're just like, oh, it's not as bad as you thought. You're not as nervous. And then you're like, oh, it's okay, right? And you start to enjoy it. Yes. Okay. Right. Eva, what about you? I don't know. Maybe you're just like, huh? How can you enjoy uh -huh. presentation? But you can. Okay. So what about you? I think, uh, yes, and we practice uh, many times about presentation. Uh, at, uh, in, at a first, it is really nervous and feel uncomfortable. But um, I think um, the second time is better. And and yes, practice makes progress. Great. Okay, so let me ask, I think Steffi, I know the answer, but do you feel comfortable when you do a presentation? What about now? Me? me? Yes, what do you think? Ah, sorry, sorry. I, I think it's better now. And it, it's not really hard when you finish it so I, I need, need to give um, myself more more confidence and and ju just do it okay and just do it mm -hmm. so what what do you think can help you become more comfortable i i think is uh if uh is because of you are not sure you are doing right or you are not you you don't know are you um you you, you can do it mm. I, I think it is big you are nervous because you don't know uh what uh, your performance is good or not so i i think um try it and more practice and just just uh practice by yourself and uh keep keep uh keep do it in your own time and you you were not that nervous before mm -hmm. Right. So, Steffi, can you get some tips for, for Eva? Because I think you're more confident in pre presenting, but I think Eva has, um, maybe you think her English is better, right? Yes. <laughs> so, what, do you, what, what are some good presentation tips that you think you can give Eva? Um, you can. Uh, I think you can... Mm, at the first, you can think uh, what are the people listening your presentation think. Okay. And uh, find the problems and practice them. And if, if other person asks you, you will, uh, you will be, you will prepare it. So you uh, you don't really feel 
nervous at that time. Good. Okay. Right. So prepare for some of the questions that they may ask you. Right. So Eva, I think a lot of the times you did prepare for it. Right. You do prepare for it, but you don't answer the questions because you might think that what you are saying is wrong. But does it matter? Is mm, right. It, Why are you afraid of saying it? Mm, because um, in, it's not really good when I uh, face to the clients and I say something wrong. <laughs> um, right, but if you're answering their question and then they think you're wrong, they'll ask you more questions, right? Okay. And if there's a question that you don't know, it's, it's, very, it's very normal for us to say, oh, let me get back to you. Okay, so uh, yes. something that you can learn, right? Even in Chinese, right? Let me get back to you, right? And I will find out and email you after the meeting. You don't have to say the answer right now, right? It's just, oh, okay, write it down. I'll write it down and then I'll get back to you, okay? So even for us, it's not like you need to have the answers for everything. Even the client will know like, oh, maybe you need to go back and to do a little research or to look at the numbers or the statistics, right? Okay. Yeah, so it's okay to make a mistake or don't know the answer, but be very professional about it, right? More okay. of confidence, right? What the client, they don't want someone who's like, mm, 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 right? You're just like, oh, okay, yeah, um, I'll get back to you on that. And you sound very confident. It's still, it will be fine for the client, right? Okay. Okay. Great, so let's continue on here with some useful expressions. Okay, so the first one, Steffi. In today's presentation, I would like to talk about. Okay, so I would like to talk about, can you finish the sentence? Uh, in today's presentation, I will talk about my pet. Okay, I would like to talk like about, to about my pet. pet. Okay, your pet, what's his name? Gun Gun. Gun Gun. <laughs> Is he rolling? Yes. <laughs> Cute. And he's a, is it he or she? Uh, she is a rabbit. Oh, she's a rabbit, so cute. I used to have a mm -hmm. rabbit too. Okay, number two, Eva. Okay. The purpose of today's presentation is to mm -hmm. is to to what? To introduce my cat. Okay, your cat. And then your cat's name is? Is Aku. <laughs> okay, so you can say is to introduce my cat. And if you're writing it, then we will have a comma here. And then okay. Aku. <laughs> <laughs> so there's to be a comma and then you can okay. say the name okay great okay number three eve uh steffi to begin with to uh, first okay or first so mm -hmm. to begin with and then what would you want to share about the first thing about, about your your pet first um i met it um the internet in the internet on, on the internet you met you mean you saw her picture or what yes i saw her picture on the internet okay so first so maybe you say first how i met right you want to tell yes. us about what you're going to tell us so you maybe you can say oh so to begin with how did i meet how did i meet her right I met her on the internet. Maybe I saw her picture on the internet, okay? So first, in English, usually we'll say what it is you want to say. So even in the introduction, you would say, oh, today my introduction, I'm gonna talk about my pet, how I met her, um, what she likes to eat, and um, what I usually do with her. Okay, so that's maybe three things. And then the first one, you'll be like, to begin with, how I met her. And then secondly, 
what she likes to eat, and thirdly, what I like to do uh, when we are together. Okay, so in English, it's a very nice structure, like a hamburger. Usually there's the bread and the bun on the top and the bottom, which is introduction and conclusion. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is something that we'll talk about more, but it's good during the presentation if you would like to practice the hamburger structure. Okay, so number four, Eva. Please take a look at. Okay, so maybe you want to show us something. Oh, okay. Okay, please take a look at what would you want us to see? My cat. <laughs> okay, you can look at your cat. It could be a picture, right? It could be um, a chart, a graph, anything like that. So please take a look at this picture of my cat and what she's doing. Introduce that to us. Great. Steffi, number five. Please chart graph. Illustrated, illustrate, 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 illustrate. Yes, right. It's okay. So this chart or this graph. So then maybe you want to show the client something, right? Okay. So this is our statistic. And then maybe you want to highlight this point here and this point here. So then first you make an introduction about what this chart is. Maybe this is the statistic of this of this quarter, right? From um, May to July. This is the the impression or the clicks that we have for our project, right? Okay, something like that. Okay, number six, Eva. Would you mind looking at? Okay, so you want to point out something. Sometimes maybe in the in, in the whole presentation, maybe it's very long. So some people are not paying attention, but you want them to sit to look at this, or you want them to look at maybe there's a rise in something. Like, oh, would you mind looking at this? And why there's a rise in, in the clicks is because that what we did here, right? And then maybe talk in more details. Okay. Seven. Steffi? In conclusion. Okay. So in conclusion, we would always have a conclusion here. In conclusion, burr, 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 um, sometimes it's talking about the same thing as the introduction. So then here is like, in conclusion, um, this is about my rabbit and what, why I love her or um, so, um, something about her, right? Okay, that's the conclusion. So number eight is the same, but in another way of saying it, Eva. To summarize. Right, to summarize. So at the end, you want to summarize something maybe in very short in one sentence. You want to tell us about, okay. So remember, if you guys have fell asleep, what this presentation was talking about, right? Okay, so to summarize, sometimes I would even talk about maybe the three most key things that you talk about in this presentation. Okay, to summarize why you should give us this project or why we should help you with your advertising is because that we have the best team, we will provide you monthly statistics and things like that. So they remember like, ah, oh, right, they're better than others. Okay. okay, that's very important. Okay, the last one, Steffi. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Right, so at the very, very end of the presentation, you could say this. So usually there may be two different types of scenarios. The first one may be that your presentation is not very long, maybe 15 to 20 minutes, right? You, would, you don't want them to ask you questions during the presentation. Then maybe in the beginning, you will say, I will leave um, time for questions at the end of the presentation. Okay, so then here at the end, you will, you can say this. I'll be happy to answer them, and they will start asking you questions. Or sometimes it's a presentation; it's maybe one hour. Then maybe you can say, "Oh, during the presentation, feel free to ask questions if you have any." Okay, so maybe they will be like, "Ah, oh, this one here, I have a question." Then you can answer them. Or maybe your slide. There's twenty slides. They don't remember which one, right? So. 
there are two ways of you how you can do it, but in the beginning of the presentation, it's best if you can tell everyone when they can ask questions so they know. Okay, great. Okay. So let's look at the first example. Okay, so Mr. Davis is delivering a presentation. Okay, so let's take turns. So Steffi, you can go here and then Eva and then Steffi. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for attending this presentation. I am Charles Davis from the furniture company. Comfortable environment. I'm responsible for the company's design choice, cho choice. In today's presentation, I would like to talk about the importance of, uh, of good design. Why is good design so important? You may ask. You may ask. You may ask. Good. You may ask. Right, going up. <laughs> okay, very good. So here, not furniture. Furniture. Furniture, furniture, furniture. Okay. Right, and always when there's an S, a lot of times people forget the S. Don't forget the S, okay? okay. Choice and choices is different. Choices means many, many, right? Choice means one, okay? okay. So choices. Choices. Mm -hmm. So during okay. the presentation, I know people will be very nervous, okay? But I also want you to practice is to slow down right oh. make people listen to you okay so here good afternoon okay here's an opening this is like our opening statement right you'll see like hey everyone not hey guys okay you can say good afternoon good morning everyone okay this is more formal guys is more like friends okay. um good afternoon everyone and thank you for attending this presentation thank you for coming that's great okay um, so here, he gives a self-introduction, right? I think this is also very good if we can also practice this. So he says, I'm Charles Davis from the furniture company. This is their company name, Comfortable Environment. I'm responsible for, right? So this is their, he's talking about like his job description or his job title, right? Why he's the person to introduce this. Oh. And then he talks about... In today's presentation, right, you give an opening. What is this presentation going to be about, right? I would like to talk to, or I would like to talk about something, right? She's talking about why it's so important to have a good design, okay? So here, this is really interesting. Why is good design so important? Okay, so this is maybe a question that maybe your clients may have. So sometimes you can even think about if you're doing it in Chinese, maybe you have a question that, oh, your client is like, hmm, why is advertising so important? Maybe they have never had anyone help them with advertising. Or why is it so important that they allow you to create designs for them, right? Why is the content so important? Why is Facebook advertising so important? Maybe they, didn't, they have never done Facebook advertising, but you would want them to do it for them, right? Because you can increase your sales. Of course, everyone wants to increase their sales. But how many percent more than Instagram design, uh, Instagram, or even more than Twitter, or even more than whatever they have been doing before, right? So this will be, ah, yes, you're answering my question and I need you for this, okay? So sometimes even asking a question that the clients may have will be more, um, this will help you to, for them to pay attention to your presentation, okay? So I think we can practice a little bit here before we move on to Eva's presentation about making an introduction here, okay? So just a very introduction. Tell us about um, who you are, your company, and what you're responsible for, okay? And then maybe talk about some presentation that usually you will do, and um, let's just practice with, with this part today, okay? This is an easy introduction part for us to practice. Okay, Steffi. Oh, my first? Yes. <laughs> okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for attending this presentation. I am Steffi Lu. 
from the uh, Jupyter Digital. Uh, it's about a digital advertising company. I'm responsible for the company's advertising. In today's presentation, I would like to talk about the importance of digital marketing. Good, okay, great. Sorry. <laughs> great, okay, that's really good. So here, if you want to try to use this sentence here, so you can say, from the digital advertising company, Jubit, okay, Jubit cool. Digital. Mm -hmm. So that's like very clear and short. Right, because maybe when you start to say Jubit's Digital, I don't like what? what. What is this company, right? So first you say what this company is about, and then you say the name. Then I know like, oh right, you're a digital advertising company, and this is your your name. And then when you say I'm responsible for the company's advertising, are you are you in charge of um, the content creation? Are you the project manager? Are you the content designer? What are you, right? I know your company is doing advertising, but what about you? What do you do? Maybe account, account manager. Good, that is what I want you to say. I'm responsible for the company's advertising and I'm the account manager, okay? So you also need to tell them what you are and you're responsible for the company's advertising what? Do you help to create the content or are you the contact window or like, what is it that you do, right? Right? So maybe you're the person who they contact. Um, are you the person who designs or are you do you help to manage the accounts of these advertising, right? So you can think a little bit about what it is. Okay, Eva, you go first. Okay. Um, Eva from the di uh, digital, digital advertising company, Jubit. I'm responsible for the company's account manager. In today's presentation, I would like to talk about the importance of uh, digital advertising. Good, okay. So here, when you say I'm responsible for, it tells, it's supposed to tell someone what you do, okay? So if you want to say account manager, then you say, I'm the account manager, right? I'm this person or I'm this role. But if you want to say I'm responsible for, you can tell us what you do. I'm uh, responsible for managing all the accounts. Okay. okay. Or talking to the clients or maintaining a good relationship, something like that. Okay. So think about what you want to say here. And Steffi, let's try it one more time. Okay. Ella, uh, Ella first, I am Steffi or I'm responsible for the... Yeah, yeah, you just start with like the whole introduction. Okay. I am Stacy from the uh, from digital marketing company, Jubit. I am, res I, am a, I am an account manager and I am responsible for the, uh, for the, for, for manager, uh, for, Man, managing the account and be a contact contact window. Okay, and am the contact window. Okay, you can say that. Okay, remember, not probably not just one account, right? Many accounts. If it's many, then it's accounts, <laughs> right? And then you can say from the digital advertising company the okay because there's only one jubit so we use the it's this one okay very specific okay great good job so eva one last time yeah, okay i i i i i think it's funny because of our job is same <laughs> it's okay it's okay it's a good practice <laughs> okay I'm Eva from the 
digital advertising company, Jubit. I'm responsible for the um, for the managing account and the account window. In today's presentation, I would like to talk about the importance of digital advertising. Good, okay. So here, when you say for the managing, we don't need the here. So the oh. is, is extra and you can say and am. Why do I say and am? It's because you either say and, if you don't say and here, then you will say I am the okay. account window. Okay. Oh, okay. But because here you already said this, I'm responsible for managing the accounts and am the contact window. Okay, great. Okay. Good job, guys. Okay, so next time we're going to continue here because this presentation is a little bit long, but I think it's a good example and I would like you also to practice along the way. Okay, great. So let's take a break and then come back to Eva's presentation, okay? Okay. Bye.